Congratulations to Kelsey Murphy on winning season 11 of Master Chef, taking home a $250,000 grand prize and the title of Master Chef. I'm Denton Davidson for Gold Derby, and we are here with the big winner herself. I'll start off asking Kelsey, what was it like in the end, standing next to Autumn and Sue in that finale and hearing Gordon call your name as the winner? Yeah, I mean, right before he called my name, honestly, my heart was just beating so fast. I'm just trying to breathe in, breathe out, and just hold it together. And then hearing my name called, I mean, I felt just like the weight of the world lifted off, lift, lifted off of me, literally. Um, it's just such a culmination of hard work, sacrifice, um, risk, leaving my family, just all of those things. And to come out on top is, it's just icing on the cake um, for this whole experience. And we obviously see the edited version of the judge's deliberation. Um, how long were you actually waiting there to hear the answer? You know, it's quite, it's quite a while. They, uh, they do not take this decision lightly. They spend um, an ample amount of time really um, discussing. And even after each course, they take a while to really deliberate um, each and every one of our dishes and nitpick as much as they can. So that anticipation is building up really all day. Um, so when it finally becomes time to hear it, um, we're definitely on edge a little bit. And we get to see in the finale that the judges clearly liked your appetizer the best, but it was really neck and neck between the three of you overall. And then you put out, as Gordon Ramsay, as Gordon Ramsay would say, a visually stunning blueberry and lavender panna cotta at the end. And what's interesting is that we see as you're cooking it, and you're not you're not hearing it, but we see Joe and Michael both say, "I don't like lavender." Mm -hmm. um, but you put it out, and you won them over anyway. So how did you come up with that dish? You know, it's definitely a dish that um, speaks to kind of the flavors my family really likes. Um, I kind of conceptualized it based off of my kids and um, dishes they like and desserts that my husband really like, and then just tried to elevate it and focus on techniques and the plating that's really gotten me through um, this entire competition. So when I completed that dish and it was successful, I just felt elated. Like it didn't matter if I won or not. I had completed that dish and I knew that it was perfect. Um, I knew the flavors were on point. I knew it looked beautiful, obviously. And I, I just was so proud um, to get that dish out. And obviously that it won over the judges. And a lot of people at home may not know this, but you were filming in the pandemic and yeah. production had to be shut down in the middle of it for mm -hmm. I think almost like five months or something. So at what point in the competition were things put on hold? And then what was that like waiting to get the call that you could come back and resume the season? Yes, it was it's a very challenging time and just strange, obviously, for everybody in a pandemic, let alone trying to film a TV show. And so, yes, we got shut down when there were um, eight of us left in the competition. So really about that halfway point. Um, and we, we got shut down, sent back home. For seven months, um, we waited um, and we just, we had no idea. No one had any idea. And in the meantime, I ended up getting pregnant. So I had to go back and finish filming, um, 25 weeks pregnant. And it was just really a roller coaster. And I think that makes the win even that much sweeter because there was so much time um, to really think about this entire experience um, and have it in the back of my mind, going home for seven months, knowing I'm going to have to go back and get back in TV mode and compete. There's a lot of uncertainty. So to accomplish it, finish it, and then now even knowing that the show has aired and we actually yeah. made it on TV. Um, so for everybody to see is, it's just really bittersweet. And I mean, I'm just, I'm so, so thankful that um, I am where I am right now. In one of the challenges, you actually cut your thumb pretty badly and kudos to you for staying calm throughout that situation. But how badly did you hurt yourself? Cause we saw it bandaged for the rest of the season. Yes, it actually um, ended up being a lot worse than we knew at the time. Um, uh, in on set, we just had to get, get it taken care of so I could get back out and cook the next day and, you know, subsequent days following. Um, after I got home, it continued to just get worse and worse and worse. And it ended up that I had actually cut through the bone um, in my thumb. So 
I ended up having to have a surgery on it to kind of repair it and rebuild the thumb back up. It's functioning great now. My surgeon did a fantastic job, but on set for the remainder of the season, it was, it was very challenging. Um, it's one thing I, I feel like I, I held myself together pretty well. Um, but as soon as kind of cameras stopped rolling, um, and I had a break, it was, it was tough. So luckily adrenaline kicks in a little bit. So you don't think about it too much, but. And this season was called Master Chef Legends. And you had all these incredible guest judges that you were able to meet and learn from. Was there one in particular that really left you sort of starstruck or one that you'd been following heavily before this all started? Yeah, I really, really um, took a liking to Roy Choi. I've been a fan of his for a very long time, not only with all this work with Netflix doing the chef show, um, but he's doing so many good things within the, the food world um, and really trying to advocate um, in many different ways um, throughout the world. Um, and so I really like what he stands for, not only in the culinary world, but as a person. Um, and then also we have the likes of Dominique Crenn and Nikki Nakayama um, come in, these strong, independent, like go-getter women who have really paved their way in the culinary world, which is so heavily male dominated, that especially for myself and Autumn and Sue was such an inspiration to have them in the kitchen, mentoring us and showing us that, you know, women have a right to be in the kitchen as well. And who was the scariest or most intimidating? Because I feel like Joe would make me nervous all the time, just because the way he looks at you, is, it's like he's about to insult you, even if he tells you something's great. That is exact. You're saying that like to a T. <laughs> it's more, it's not what he says, it's his looks that he gives you. That you you know something's coming and you don't know what, <laughs> what it is. So it's, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but it's that look before that gets your heart like, oh God, what, what are you going to say? <laughs> So he definitely is the most intimidating. The other two, Gordon and Arone, really are, they're very sweet and they're very helpful and encouraging. They're great mentors and educators really at heart. So um, it, was, it was really a joy to learn from them. And when you think back on all the dishes you cooked and all of the challenges, um, obviously, other than winning, of course, what were you most proud of or what was your favorite thing you put on the table? Um, well, we already talked about my dessert from the finale. So that was obviously, you know, my, my favorite thing that I did, um, and what I was most proud of, but I would say, honestly, the challenge where we had to perform our three course Kaiseki meal was definitely a challenge where I felt the most, um, nervous and the most, um, ill prepared for, and then really had to step out of my comfort zone and prepare something that I was totally uncomfortable with and ended up winning. And I felt like I not only proved to myself that I'm more capable than I think, but I also proved, I feel like to Nikki that I was able to honor her culture and what she stands for. Um, and the, the, having those both together really just made me really proud of my dish that day and what I was able to accomplish when I felt so unready, uh, not ready to complete that. And what was the one you regretted the most that scared you like, I'm going to go home for this? So to the viewers who have watched it, that's obviously the one time I ended up in the bottom, my French challenge. It, it was kind of like a, one of those laps in like just judgment and my brain was just not working. It was, um, it was filmed the day after I had cut my thumb. So I was really struggling in the kitchen. And um, I think I just oversimplified and got a little bit too confident in how I was doing in the competition. And honestly, I think it was a blessing because it, it really set a fire under me to kind of whip it back into gear and know that I'm not invincible in this competition. And I was so close to going home. I was, I was sure I was going home during deliberation um, before we found out that Michael had undercooked his um, chicken. So um, yeah, it was definitely a wake up call. Um, one that I will always remember. <laughs> And we get to share a little bit of exciting news here. Um, for the first time, Grubhub is teaming up with MasterChef and you have the opportunity to join the ranks of other MasterChef alums in a new first of its kind concept, bringing fan favorite recipes directly to diners homes exclusively on Grubhub. Do you have any details on how that's going to work or is that still all being worked out? So a lot of the details are being worked out. We cannot share all of them yet, but 
Yes, I am so honored that I am going to be able to partner um, with MasterChef and Grubhub and, you know, the fellow um, MasterChef winners. This is such a huge opportunity and hopefully one of many that I'll get to do um, with, with MasterChef. And then this collaboration and partnership with Grubhub is going to be so exciting um, for diners to, you know, really get a taste and a piece of um, our food. So more details to come, but um, I want everybody to get really excited about it because um, it's just a first very unique experience. Well, Kelsey, this season was so much fun to watch. Congratulations once again on your win. We are wishing you continued luck in your next endeavors. And thank you for taking the time to talk with Gold Derby today about your experience on MasterChef. Thank you guys so much. And thank you for supporting us all season. You guys have been great. Mm -hmm.